balloons. Charlie paced back and forth across the tiled kitchen floor, his tiny Chuck Taylor squealing every time he changed direction. Come on, Petey. They're already outside. It doesn't start for another half an hour, Charlie. See? The clowns are still smoking. Peter was right. Bingo the clown was sitting in front of his balloon truck in yellow trousers and a red hot chili peppers t-shirt, rattling the cancer out of a pack of Marlboros. Peter smiled at what he mistook for dismay on Charlie's face. It was euphoria. Balloons! Seriously, Charlie? Still? You're eight years old, man. Those things kill penguins. We don't have penguins here. Not anymore. What? cried Charlie, very quickly coming to tears. Just then, a knock at the door. Charlie froze. Connoisseur of balloons, perhaps, but a social butterfly he was not. Peter beckoned Charlie to him before opening the door. Charlie needed to learn not to burst into flames any time a stranger asked him a question. Peter thought maybe the adrenaline from the block party would distract him, but no dice. He grabbed Charlie's hand and dragged the trembling child to the door. Go on, open it. Charlie didn't budge. With a sigh of impatience, Peter yanked open the door. Nobody. Nothing. Not even a balloon! Charlie screamed with delight. A big, beautiful red balloon was tied to the doorknob by a glimmering red ribbon. It shone so well in the sun, it seemed to be radiating its own light. It was blinding, dazzling. Charlie was bewitched. He fiddled with the knot at the base of the string with his grubby, nailless fingers. Here, Peter said absently, and worked the knot for his brother. Charlie stuck out his hand so Peter would tie the balloon to his wrist. He did so, his attention still elsewhere. He was staring at the end of the block, at a truck now bustling with life. Where once had sat a smoke-sucking funk rocker with a five o'clock shadow, there now lurked a new beast. From the feet up, red shoes, yellow trousers, a purple button-up with orange pom-poms, a far cry from a chili's tea, and a face painted white, blue, and red. What had sat there before was a carny choking on half a black lung, but somehow he was not the same all fixed up. It was not that he looked different, but that there was just no trace of the smoker at all. That was someone else. Someone not covered in clean, colored paint. Someone not wearing bright, baggy pants, and certainly not someone shrouded in balloons. What's more, he was so far away. Peter scanned down the block for the other balloon man, the one who had tied Charlie's to the door. There were cotton candy carts, elephant ear stands, ski ball, and spinning teacups, several of each. You could buy a lemonade six times down the block and a hot dog six more. But there was only one balloon truck. Only one balloon man. How the hell did he get here and back so fast? Peter thought. He must have sprinted the whole way. But he'd be out of breath then. And he sure wasn't. He still had plenty. Enough to blow up all those balloons. All, how many were there? Fifty? Seventy-five? A hundred? Yeah, at least a hundred. There had to be a pump or a machine or something, but no. There he was, huffing away like his chest wasn't full of tar and nicotine. In the time it took Peter to invent a phony penguin genocide, that man had transformed into a McDonald-grade child magnet conjured up a nest of balloons. And just as he thought it, the child magnet started to reel in his kid brother from down the street. Peter had just enough time to see a red balloon bobbing its way down the block before Charlie was lost in the throng. Charlie! Charlie, wait! Peter trudged headlong into the mass of block partiers. He waded through until he saw a tiny hand with a red ribbon. He made a final sprint, shoulder-checking parents and peddlers. He snatched up the hand and whipped it around to face his brother. 
Instead, he faced a Cheeto-fingered toddler with tears rolling down its cheeks. Hey, perv, let go of him, hollered a dark-haired teenager. She smacked Peter's hand away, but he hadn't time to explain himself. Charlie, you fuck nut, I'm gonna piss in your cereal, you moron, he thought. He had to find his brother. Two orange cones at the end of the street didn't seal them off from the rest of the world. It was still dangerous. There were criminals. There were kidnappers. There were real pervs out there. There were clowns. <laughs> oh, Charlie, that's quite a lot of balloons. I'm afraid you may just float away. These words cut through the crowd like warm water through fresh snow. They were hot and clear. Peter chugged away at ten more yards to find his brother Charlie with a dozen balloons tied to every limb. He was giggling that involuntary giggle that you grow out of once you're nine, but still trickles in when you're seven and eight. It was the sound of sheer glee, utter joy. Charlie had found Nirvana in being the balloon man's first victim. Charlie, called Peter, gasping. Charlie! Charlie! But it was no use. Charlie was in another world. His laugh seemed to be continuous. His smile just wider than Peter was comfortable with. Charlie was somewhere else, somewhere underneath that cackle. Whatever Peter was hollering at was like bingo here, drowned out to nothing beneath that frightening smile and all those balloons. What are you doing, Petey? Hey, hey, let go. You can't have them. Those are mine. He gave them to me. Charlie whined as Peter began to untie the balloons, this time not absentmindedly, this time present and angry, and this time harder, much harder. These weren't just knots or bows. Peter didn't know what they were, but they wouldn't come loose. He dug his nails into the meat of the ribbon, trying to get at the guts of the tie, but no luck. <laughs> oh boy, those knots are giving you some grief, buddy. Would you like me to lend a hand? Bingo wrapped a set of enormous white gloved fingers around Charlie's pudgy little arm and pulled one of the balloons loose with a single tug. Ooh, that was a toughie. <laughs> Peter made eye contact with Bingo as the balloon ribbon slid off Charlie's wrist and into the summer air. He took in his whole face, the white paint, the blue eyes, the red nose, the red lips, the white teeth, the teeth, white teeth. Peter began to tear balloons off of Charlie's arm one by one, pulling at the ribbons until they snapped. He grabbed whole handfuls of ribbons and yanked them off at once. Charlie screamed, Ow! It hurts, Petey! Stop it! Stop! It hurts! As the last balloon floated away, Charlie sat on the concrete, crying hard. There were red burns up and down his arm where the ribbon had been drawn against his skin. A small crowd had formed around them, gawking at the scene the boys had made. Come on, Charlie. We're going home. He held out his hand to the wailing boy. Charlie made no move to grab it, so Peter snatched up his brother and trudged back down the block, through the funnel cakes and the cotton candy stands, all the way to their front door. He opened the door with such force that it swung into the wall behind it with a resounding crack. Petey, why did you go and do that? bawled Charlie. He sat on the floor rubbing his arms and wiping the snot from under his nose. But Peter had no answer. He was consumed by those teeth. They were white pearly white. Pristine. Never touched a cup of coffee white. Certainly not chain-smoking carnival clown white. There was just no way. No way that was the same man. And Charlie? What had gotten into him? Why had he run off? Why had he ignored Peter when he called? Well, that wasn't like him. He was a good kid. A smart kid. And what was with that grin? And that cackle? Really, what had gotten into Charlie? Peter didn't know, but he thought he had an idea. He thought it had something to do with those balloons, Charlie exclaimed. As he did, 
He pointed at the door behind Peter, which swung ajar to reveal a bouquet of balloons tied to the handle. Reds, blues, and whites all bounced against each other, glistening and opaque, brilliant in the summer sun. They were dazzling, blinding, mesmerizing. Charlie made a dash for the balloons, but Peter was quicker. He slammed the door shut, turned the latch, and slid the chain for good measure. Charlie moaned, Petey, why'd you have to do that? Th those things c kill penguins, Charlie. Peter grabbed his brother's wrist with one trembling hand and led him up to their room.